Hey, welcome to Well.com, home of TIG time. Hi, I'm Mr. TIG, and today we have a project that we're continuing. It's actually called the Lance Campo uh, Symbol Project, and we've already tried a couple of different things uh, on these symbols. And the, the objective is, how do you take a damaged symbol and re-weld it, or braze it, or do something, and still maintain a good sound or even create a different sound. And that's really where the science uh, mixes with the artistry of Lance Campo. So uh, we have tried soft solder and we've tried silver solders of different types. Uh, we've done all kinds of uh, cracks and overlaps. This particular symbol is just a little bit different because we're running out of ideas on filler materials. And we can continue on and on with different filler materials to make this work. And we can, we can be successful in, in getting it to braze or weld, but it may not have the, uh, uh, the sound that you know, the drummers are looking for. So here's, here's what's happened. We've had viewers call in and say, hey, look, we've got this material we think might help this project. Uh, so I've got this, this silver solder, and it's called SSF dash six. Uh, anyway, it's a product by a company called Muggy Weld. Uh, so you can go online and you can see Muggy Weld and they have little demos and, and things like that where you can use uh, oxyacetylene or you can use propane or anything that you want to make this work. Uh, but this symbol, just so you know, it's, a, uh, it's got 20% tin in it and it's got 80% copper. So the beauty behind silver is it does a lot of mixing and matching. And, and I think um, their literature shows that this has probably somewhere, somewhere around 56 uh, plus or minus percent of silver in it. Uh, so what we're going to attempt to do today is we're going to take this piece and we're going to put it in place, uh, mark it, line it up. We're going to use the oxyacetylene just because we have it. Uh, much more controllable than propane. Um, anyway, this, uh, this, this bell, if you will, this bell material uh, is actually, it, it is weldable. It's just that it tries to distort on you. Um, and so we're going we're gonna to put some weights on to hold it in place while we're doing it. So I'm going to go ahead and get my gear on. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and put the weight on this thing. Hopefully I don't move it. This... Um, this filler, it's got a melting point of 1,050 degrees. So uh, in the instructions on using this, you got the silver, and there's, there's some other elements in there. I'm not sure exactly what they are. But this flux is what, what keeps everything protected. So i got to make sure that I get this thing a little bit preheated, get the flux to, to take first, and then uh, I'm just going to see how it goes. I may, I may tack it a couple of places. Uh, but really, it's just how does it flow? Uh, so I'm going to get my gear on. I don't need a lot of safety gear. Uh, and when I say that, uh, you know, yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and put my sleeves on. But uh, I've got these, these gloves that are pretty flexible. And, and this type of rubber actually is a, a kind of a heat-resistant rubber, very flexible. So I can, I can adjust my, my torch, and, and uh, I'm going to be manipulating around a lot anyway. So uh, let me get my gear on. I'm going to use my uh, safety glasses that have a tent, and that's you know just about a 3.4, so that's going to work fine for me. So I'll join you in just a few minutes. Okay, so I've got oxygen and acetylene. I go ahead and I turn the oxygen or the acetylene on first, and this is always the trick because there's always a kind of a pop. Now, I like to put just a little bit of oxygen into it, just barely crack it. So I don't get that black smut. Anyway, so I'm going to increase the, the acetylene, and then I increase the oxygen. And there's a flame right here that I'm looking for in particular. And this is a neutral flame, and when you look at this little little point in the center, that's neutral. Now, if I put too much uh, acetylene in, turn it on too much, here's what happens. See how that feathers out? Okay, so it's not neutral. It's putting in too much of one gas. So, And I can go the other way. I just don't want to, to uh, put too much oxygen in because then it doesn't wet out as night. You got too much oxygen going in there. So nice neutral flame. 
I'm just going to take a certain section over here and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a little bit of a preheat. You can see the moisture go out of this real quick. But again, I've got the flux right here on the alloy. I don't want to stay in one spot too long because I don't want to create a hot spot. I just want to get this whole thing just a little bit, just a little bit hot. Okay, so I hit that flux. I want to make sure that the flux is, is covering. And it's, you know, it's, it's trying to wet out. It just has to get started somehow. So you got to kind of, kind of get it working there. And this is going to take a lot of alloy to to fill this in. Wow, it's. Uh, it, it's trying to flow out and cover quite a large area. I got quite a slope to this, so let me let me continue on. If you've ever done plumbing or uh, sweating pipes, it's kind of the same thing, it's just that I've got a little bit more gap in here. Yeah, so you know, you got a melting temperature of uh, you know, 1050 Fahrenheit, that's pretty high. Trying to keep from uh, creating any red hot spots. It's trying to. Okay, so the other half, it's trying to lift on me right now. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop and see if I can get it worked back down. So that means I'm going to have to cool this part completely down. Okay, I had to, I had to reset here. One of the things that was happening is the, uh, the, the base of the symbol was starting to distort. So I got some weights and I'm holding it down flat. Now I know somewhere uh, after this is finished, I think Lance is going to re-roll it and reshape it and all that. But... Uh, I just want to get as much distortion and mismatch out of this as possible. It is going to move around. So anyway, I've got some weights on here. It's flat. We're going to uh, go ahead and finish it out.
Okay, so I'm, I'm pouring water on here. It's not going to have any uh, negative impact, you know, on the uh, on the structure. What it does is it allows the flux to pop off of there. So let's uh, let's take it back to the workbench and dry it off and take a look at it. All right, so, so here's what we did. I'll, I just want to recap this. The, the top hat of this, uh, the two sections, was in really good shape. When we first started, there was a pretty good contour all the way around. There weren't any flat spots. Now, as we, as we started to braise or silver braise, uh, the heat started this thing distorting and warping. So it's kind of got a pretzel effect. So when I look at this, uh, two things that I look at. One is, did this material wet out nicely? Uh, and I've got to say, yes, it did. Uh, pretty impressed with it, actually. I'd never used it before. Again, it's called Muggy Weld, and it's SSF6 Silver Solder. Um, and you can get it on the description of the notes in this show. Now, it, this is kind of an operation that uh, the operation was a success, but the patient died. Uh, and when I say that, this thing looks like a pretzel right now. So I don't know what Lance can do with the shaping of this. I know that's what he specializes in. But the one thing that we can give it a thumbs up is that it did adhere well. Uh, and it wet out nicely. Uh, so let's see what Lance can do with it. We'll, we'll continue on it again. Didn't even know this existed until uh, somebody called the show and said, hey, I got something I think would work for you. So if you're one of those persons, just let us know, and we'll continue the project. So uh, this is the, uh, the Lance Campo symbol project, and uh, we'll keep it going. So thank you for watching TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG. To stay up with the latest TIG welding technology and education, subscribe by clicking the button below.